Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode we begin with a really horrible reputation but a chance to fix that by launching our Kelly 3 Earth Orbit Edition to the station that we launched in the previous episode, thereby fulfilling a contract. Um, also, uh, if we can have them stay in space for 14 days, that would be good too. So the plan of action is to launch two Kerbals to the station, Spaceport 1, and uh, have them stay up there. It, it's it, I think it wants them there for 30 days here. So they'll be there for 30 days. They'll also fulfill this contract for 14 days, crew duration record. And while they're up there, we are going to launch this Jupiter Orbiter, which is currently being built here. And our Jupiter transfer window is in nine days. So And then after that's launched and on its way, we will bring them back down. Okay, um, I'll probably have to put together some sort of Mars mission in there somewhere, but that'll still be in the process of being built when we bring the Kerbals back down. Let's just uh, roll this out and launch that first, and let's hope it all goes well. Okay, here we are with the Earth Orbit Kelly 3 on a Nico 606, very stubby rocket with Joan and Bob. Joan's a pilot, Bob's a scientist. Bob hasn't gotten much to do uh, so far, so we'd like him to go up and get some science done. We have a lot of lines now, don't we? Lots and lots of lines. Um, let's turn off some lines, but I uh, keep forgetting to add some sort of haystack plugin or something to this. Um, does something have a station icon around, maybe? Okay, well, we're way off from where we need to be for that, so... Um, looks like electric charge is diminishing. Let's turn on the fuel pumps. Now, probably top off the water accidentally, but that's not a huge problem. Okay, and then time warp. I know they highlight our target vehicle's orbit, but I really wish they'd highlight where the target vehicle was, actually highlight the icon, right? Because it's also important where it is for when we decide to time our launches. Okay, I think we'd better launch about now. Still a little bit off on the inclination, but the station is approaching the west coast of Mexico, and I think that that's a good time to get this underway. So, SAS is on, throttle is up, and ignition. And launch. 6 NK-15s functioning. Well, we're past the speed of sound, and this is around max Q. Everything looks to be fine. Halfway through the burn of these engines. Okay, 3.5 Gs, 50 kilometers up. All the engines look set to run right through to the end. That's good. And there we have the first stage set. Second stage. Alright, second stage is active. We have lost one engine on the second stage. That was quick. But uh, we've got five good engines. That'll be just fine. Uh, our G-forces, our thrust weight ratio seems fine at this pitch, I think. Maybe a little bit more to compensate for the lost engine. Separating the launch escape system. And it is off. You can see right now, uh, to compensate for the single engine loss, they're using about half the pitch, let's say 40% of the pitch and 40% of the yaw. We could of course shut down the opposite engine and they won't even have to compensate. 
but we'll wait. We don't want to push the other engines past their rated burn time or anything. The, the burn time should be well under their rated burn time, though. So, yeah. Plenty of buffer here. Relative inclination is now pretty close. We're basically halfway to orbit. It's possible we should have waited a little bit longer before launching. Looks like the station will still be behind us, even though we're going to be going into a lower orbit. It'd be better if it was ahead of us. Let me switch off this engine. Nope, it just... Uh, the one thing I want to set as a target, it won't, doesn't want to set as a target. So this is not the target right now. But I need to shut this down. Okay, that stage is done. And we'll use the, the service module or whatever engines we've got up there to finish orbit. Right now we're just coasting up. Uh, Apple Apps is in 21 minutes, plenty of time to figure things out. We had enough Delta V to finish orbit on this stage, obviously, but then our apoapsis would go out of control. So, yeah. Um, I think uh, everything can go at the same time, right? Or am I missing something? Except. Okay. It'd be better if we were higher than it now, because it's behind us. Yeah, well, I guess we'll do that. We've got a lot of fuel. We've got, like, lunar transfer amounts of fuel, so... I'm not too bothered about using it. Alright, let's uh, try some ignition stuff. SAS on. Uh, RCS forward. Settle fuel down. Throttle up, and... Okay, forward. Okay, that gives us a two kilometer separation. I think we can go with that for now. Okay, where is it? There it is. Alright, target, negative relative velocity. Looks like we have 62 meters per second to deal with. We've been pretty free with our delta V so far, but uh, it hasn't hurt us very much. Yeah, we can definitely make a simpler system than what we have here for this purpose. The thing is still having enough redundancy in the launcher. Okay, that should be close enough for a start. Let's hop over there. Right, um, these... Uh-oh. Ah, oh, nuts. I didn't... Oh, boy. I may have made a minor mistake. Or a major mistake. I don't think... We don't have an Apollo docking system on this, do we? Well, fudge. Even worse, we don't have a remote controller on here either. So once the Kerbals leave, this is out of control. We have to return them home in the same craft, it looks like. Or, I don't know, it says tracked vessel here. We can put them in there, but then how are they going to get back? I mean, we can launch another one of these, but and then but then we'd have to have a remote controller on it. We don't have a remote controller anywhere here, do we? Well, this is just bad planning, isn't it? Well, this is why our space agency has the reputation that it has, folks. 
What can we say? Clearly, clearly I should have at least put a Paul docking system on, you know, right here. It would have even looked better. It's almost like I made this for the Apollo docking system, but just decided not to put it there. Yeah, I, I guess I forgot that step. Hmm. If we put the cr two craft into really close orbits to each other, maybe they can EVA back and forth between them. This still has 274 meters, second, meters per second of fuel. So maybe it could make the rendezvous because the other side won't have any control. That'll be interesting. That'll be more interesting than I intended. It doesn't technically say that we have to dock this vessel to the station. So there's that. Actually, before we leave this side B and hope that it stays in a reasonable approximation of Spaceport 1's orbit. We could also have it uh, persistently rotate to track the Sun though. I don't know if that works when you don't have any controller on. Probably not. Oh, I think uh, 10 meters is close enough for our purposes. Probably too close. This whole idea is dodgy right now. But I don't want to fail this. We could just bring them down and then send a changed craft up, but... I'd rather get it done here. But yeah, uh, if we dump the lander can and maybe reduce the overall delta V in this thing because we have too much. Maybe simplify the launcher somewhat, but keep enough redundancy. We would be able to build them much faster and therefore have a like a rescue a lineup of rescue vessels. Okay, I think this is good. Let's have our scientist TVA first. Okay. That gap is so annoying, but not as annoying as the fact that I left off the correct docking ports. I wonder why I have ladder rungs here. Does not seem to be the right place. That fooled me. I guess I put some symmetry that I shouldn't have. Okay, grab. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, fudge. Well, that's going to make things more complicated. Let's uh, maybe rotate the station a bit to make that all easier. That's critically important that you actually stop rotating, okay, station? Okay, grabbing work this time and board. All right, Bob's in. That's one. Okay, let's rotate the station to make it easier for Joan. Okay, well, now this craft is out of control. Nope, nope. That orientation was not good enough. <sighs> I mean, I was down to less than 0.1 meter per second relative to the target, but no. Nope. We'll put uh, Joan in this one. Give each Kerbal their own little section. I'm trying to minimize my relative velocity before grabbing and I also want to be very centered on the thing. Okay, well, 
that's zero. Okay. Uh, oh, wow. Okay. All right, they're both in. Does it count? At least two Kerbals. It started a counter. It's still tracking the Kelly, so we do have to get them back into that spacecraft specifically in order to get them back home. As le at least that's how I'm reading this. But they're in here for 30 days. Um, they've got one year and 67 days of supplies, so that's not a problem. And uh, we have some time to figure out exactly how to deal with this situation, but they're in here now. And that's the way it's going to be. Alright, on to the next thing. Well, after the recent fiasco, I decided to proceed with redesigning our spacecraft immediately. So here we have the Apollo docking system that can work properly with our station. And we've got the Kelly 4 without its little lander can module and instead an extended service module here. And still the same uh, Lunar Advanced Gemini lander engines that you've seen me use plenty of times. Um, they have six minutes of fuel and that gives an amazing 2,583 meters per second which should be more than enough to handle any sort of situation with the launcher. Um, utilization is at 79% because, I mean, the, the Kerbals have to sort of sneak through here, right? Uh, so I figure if you take a look at the, the area, if you take a look at this area and assume this is the area that they're going to sneak through and make that a tunnel all the way through, uh, we can say that the tankage space is limited based on that. Uh, it probably should be a little bit lower than 79, but uh, this was a good happy medium. Uh, but that causes all sorts of problems because uh, this is still on the Nico 606 and now it's smaller so it looks even weirder on top of the rocket. And the thrust of the second stage is so high that uh, we've got 11, 11 G's of thrust to weight ratio here, but uh, of course they can throttle down. So they can throttle to 60% giving us about 6.6 .6 G's. That's still not good. Uh, now we don't actually intend to burn out that stage. We'll have some fuel left over. We don't normally have it go completely empty. So there is that going for us. We can also shut down three of the engines because they're actually set in uh, sets of three. So um, here we have the NK-19's toggle engine and toggle engine. So I can just hit nine and shut half of them off. And of course, if one of them fails, uh, that, that'll work out. <laughs> so, so there is that. But it did bring to mind that we should have a smaller launcher because this is now quite overpowered. I mean, of course, I had a lot of redundancy to begin with, and now we have even more redundancy with this system. It, it only takes 17 days to build, and it's 33,000 funds, so it's not bad. Uh, but it does have, you know, Delta V to get all the way to the moon. So, that brought to mind a Kelly 4 on a Nico 404. Now, this is not all that much cheaper than the version on a Nico 606, because the spacecraft itself is... The expensive part it's only 4,000 funds cheaper but uh, it takes three days less time to build so that's good and well it still retains some redundancy but not quite as good as with the Nico 606 uh, plenty of extra Delta V and of course again the spacecraft can uh, cover it if there is any failure and we need to abort to orbit uh, in this case, the max thrust weight ratio is 8.5, let's say, and since they can throttle down to 60%, we can get that down to, uh, let's say, 5 Gs of thrust if we get to the point where we actually have to burn out that stage, which we shouldn't. But if there's a failure, we might. So that's manageable without shutting down any of the engines uh, beforehand. Thru uh, the burn time is fairly manageable altogether seven minutes so it's still a quick ride to orbit but yeah that's the Kelly 4 and Nico 404 but some of you probably want to see one other thing and that is of course the Gemini capsule on a Titan rocket so let's take a look at that now the problem with uh, putting the Kelly on a Titan 2 is it can't really carry the Kelly 4 uh, in fact it can't even handle launch escape system really 
and we had to make the spacecraft much smaller. You know that uh, with the Kelly 4 we had 2,500 meters per second over here in the service module. Right now we only have a thousand here and even that's pushing it. And even that, um, this will actually have to complete orbit. The launcher can't actually get it all the way to orbit. I've called it Larry 201. Um, continuing with my name, I guess 21 would have been fine, but 201 makes it clearer that we have one upper stage LR91. And of course I picked Larry because just like with the Nikos being based on the NK, uh, here Larry's based on the LR. So LR91, a single one, as on the Titan rocket. And then of course uh, the LR87, which is technically considered one engine unit even though it's two complete engines. So yeah, LR87 there. We're currently on the LR87 AJ9. And so that's the variant. But you can see right now our thrust weight ratio is pretty bad altogether. It's a really tough liftoff and a pretty low thrust weight ratio on the second stage to loft this up. And that's because I'm st I've still got probably a heavier service module than Gemini actually had. Now, you know, we could put together the Gem, but if we use the Gemini service module, A, it's going to be expensive to actually use because uh, right now we are cheaper. That's the good thing. We are cheaper than the Kelly 4 on the Nico 404 um, by about 5,000, uh, no, about 7,000 funds. But the actual Gemini adapter equipment section would be 7,000 funds. <laughs> so that would kill that. And also there's the retrograde pack that would have to be put on. And I haven't even unlocked that because that costs 40,000 to unlock. So, so we're going with this. Uh, actually, um, so that's 7,000. And if we take a look, well, this is about 7,000 too, but it's got a lot more Delta V. It's got solar panels. It's got... It's got good stuff on. It's got a docking port, so it's a little bit more useful. But yeah, uh, our capabilities are severely diminished if we try and launch this on a Titan rocket. And also there's the problem that basically this is one engine, and that's one engine. So if there's a failure, we're doomed. Uh, so the redundancy does not exist with this system. And if we were try to try and re add redundancy, we would probably bring it up to a cost similar to our other rockets uh, or greater. And the uh, construction time is 15 days still, so it actually takes longer to construct this than it takes to build the Kelly 4 and the Nico 404. So that's an analysis of all of that. But we have a Jupiter probe to deal with. So I'll, I'll get a Kelly 4 and a Nico 404 prepared, might as well. And maybe I'll queue up a, one on a 606 as well, just to see. But we have other things to deal with right now. Actually, before I forget, let's handle our Mars launch and get that queued up. Now, we don't have any contracts for Mars, and we're not going to get any with our current reputation. But we might as well toss a fuel depot over there. And so that's what I've got here. Looks sort of like a Martian or an alien of some sort, but uh, yeah, lots of docking ports, a Paul docking system, and then four of the propellant ones, just in case. And this is actually the tank we're delivering. This is the tank to get into orbit around Mars. We could, like, try an aerobrake, but this is safer, I feel. So, yeah, we're going to manually try to, try to get into orbit around Mars. We've got antennae, we've got solar panels, we've got uh, the communitrons. We've got RCS ports, and I think we're good to go. We've got the Thor avionics unit, which should be able to handle this kind of mass. So yeah, that's all good. Now we have the S4 stage as our transfer stage, and we've got the avionics unit here. I hope that is structurally okay. I moved the, the Arizina N204 RCS tank down here so that we don't have to enable crossfeed on this decoupler because, um, yeah, right now crossfeed is false. And besides, uh, we had to put the Thor avionics unit down here anyway, because uh, it used to be on top with the inner stage, but this isn't an inner stage setup. This is a proper fairing setup. So yeah, six RL10s for the transfer. The Delta V looks like this. Um, 
it's really not the ideal situation. What we would like is either the ability to restart the NK-19s, you know, we, we'd have the NK-31s, I believe, or we would like longer burn times on the RL-10s, upgraded ones of those. Right now we're at the max for their burn time, 7 minutes and 50 seconds, so that's, that's the downside. We're probably going to end up wasting some Delta V in the third stage as a result. If we made the RL-10 transfer stage larger, that would save that. Um, but yeah, uh, also we don't have the J2 yet. Uh, pro I mean, we've obviously got many technologies being unlocked, which we can't see right now. But yeah, that's later on. And we'll just get that there. Since we don't have any other pressing mission to handle at Mars, we might as well send some fuel over. The total amount of fuel we're actually delivering is... 10 tons. That's a uh, 0.28 ton dry mass tank and 10 tons, 10.28 tons wet, so 10 tons of Arizina and 204 is what we're delivering. And it's the fuel mixture for the Astros engines, so we will keep that in mind. Okay, everything else should be fine, so let's just uh, save and build. All right, here we are with the Jupiter Orbiter mission, and we're already one day past the uh, desired transfer window, though with Jupiter it's not that finicky. Uh, but that does mean that even though we're uh, 5.3 degrees off from the Moon's plane, which is somewhat uh, the same as the plane of the solar system, I'm just going to go ahead and launch rather than wait a whole day to get back into position. So here we are, SAS is on, Thrall is up. And yeah, five degrees we can fix on the way up anyway, so it should be fine. And there's no guarantee that that's the best inclination anyway. So, ignition. And launch. Okay, here we go. We've lost an engine. We just have to make sure we... Oh, we've lost two engines. Okay. One is right at the center. The other is on this booster. We've lost another engine. Um, that's on this booster now. Well, let's hope it uh, gets all the engine failures out of the way on the first stage. I really wish I had checked which action group I had everything in on. I forget whether the boosters are on action group 0 or action group 9. I might have to do the shutting off of the oxygen trick again. Alright, let's get the affected boosters up here. Uh, uh stop. Uh, no. Off. Off. Right. Okay, set. Oh, whoa. Okay, I need to move those Separatrons. Somebody mentioned that in the comments. I really do need to move those Separatrons. They do need to be moved up. I don't know why they're where they are. I think it was because the boosters started out smaller than they are now. We've lost another engine. But that's the end of that stage. All right, we'll call that a nominal ascent for the first stage of Nico 2544. <laughs> Let's separate off the fairings.
Okay, let's take a look at where we are and whether we can potentially keep the third stage burning. So we'll want to eject out this away. So we want our apoapsis on this side. I guess we can keep the third stage burning. It'll be over here somewhere, our apoapsis then. Not the most convenient place. But it's better than the opposite. Okay, step. Uh, okay, separation. Even the computer was confused for a sec there. Oh, we do need a little bit more pitch. The thrust weight ratio of this stage isn't that great. But we'll keep it burning. So we'll take advantage of all this delta V, even though it's not at the perfect position. We're pretty much lined up. Let's just target Jupiter directly. We might be close, though. I mean, it's not too far off. You can see other trajectories here, right? There, that's probably a stage that got a probe to exit. So, you know, we're sort of... I don't know what these are, actually, but maybe to the moon. Okay, we are now approaching orbit. Pretty perfect position, really. We're flat, time to apoapsis going down. Um, apoapsis is a little bit high, but we're just gonna continue burning here. So there we go, we are now in orbit. That stage went just fine. So did the second stage. So all the problems were with the first stage. All right, throttle down and separation. Uh, some fairing pieces don't want to go with the rest of them. Okay, in this one, uh, we do have the RCS tanks at the bottom. Sorry about the clipping of the controller and the RL10s, but that's just how it is. Okay, so now let me plot for Jupiter. All right, we have a plot for Jupiter. It'll take 5,622 meters per second. Well, that's the prograde, but the normal is so small that it doesn't actually change the actual amount. So, yeah, we are good on that. Uh, as far as trying to match the target orbit around Jupiter, we're not going to be able to do that. We'll get into orbit just fine, but and we'll probably have to fix this inclination quite a lot. I'd rather fix it so that we hit the orbits, the plane of the moons, rather than the target orbit there. That will get us a lot more science opportunity. Uh, we, we'll manage that as it comes. We could uh, potentially get into orbit around one of the moons instead. We'll see about that. But uh, yeah, we don't really have enough to get into this. Uh, that'll take After the transfer burn, that'll take another 11,000 meters per second to get this low around Jupiter. So that's tough, but we're working our way to that. Better engines will be coming, and then we will have the opportunity to make a better rocket, but for now we'll make do, and we will try to make orbit around Jupiter, but let's uh, make sure as much as possible is ready beforehand. So um, let's just target Earth with this one. Got uh, RTGs. We got solar panels here. There's no point in not extending those. And of course, they probably provide supplementary power for the controller on that stage. The RL10s will only provide the beginning of the burn, and then the Astros engines will continue after that. Okay, let's time warp to the burn point. Oh wait, 
I think I've just noticed a flaw in our plan. It would seem like uh, we're getting an assist from the moon that also includes a crash course at the moon. Let me try and correct this. Okay, amended moon avoiding trajectory is ready. Let's turn on RCS. Oh, wait, wait. Um, lock all the things up here. Jeez, that's finicky. And of course I can't actually click on half of it. Um, well, we'll call that all right. I think we can just ignite actually. Let's see. Alright, there we go. Six RL10s are ignited. And we are on our way to Jupiter. I've checked, by the way, and we can't really plot a... Oh, by the way, this is what our pass by the moon really looks like now. So we're actually coming in low and far away. But I checked for a transfer to Saturn or another one of the planets, but that didn't really work out. You can see here, we fly by Jupiter here, and then we get flung like that. But with Saturn over here, by the time we get over here, Saturn won't have completed its orbit yet. Neither will Uranus or Neptune. Well, I mean, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto are definitely nowhere near where they need to be. Uh, Saturn had the best possibility. Uh, if we could get Jupiter to bend our orbit to like, well, the problem is, if you figure when we actually pass by Saturn, it'd be like five to seven years, say. Saturn's orbit is 28 years long, so in seven years, it'll be over here. It's a little bit hard for Jupiter to, when we are coming in like this, to like shoot us back across the sun. That's just not going to happen. Well, not very well anyway. Uh, so I don't think that's a reasonable trajectory. It's more like if uh, Saturn was over here that it could do it. I mean, uh, if it was ending up over here, Saturn should start out like over here. It's a little bit too far forward right now. Okay, last 10 seconds of the burn. We seem to be a little bit early on the burn. Uh, we should have started a little bit later. But anyway, separation. Um, you know, it's interesting. I didn't put RCS on here. I probably should have because we're probably going to have some fuel left over in there. And we'll probably be carrying it along for an extended period of time. Apparently did not consider that. That's locked, that's locked, that's locked. There's still more Delta V than is in this stage. Ah, there we go. Ah, uh, maybe we should leave that open as RCS fuel, since it looks like we're going to need it. Well, we're very much on escape, and we are getting closer and closer to that Jupiter encounter that we want. It's going to be touchy, though. Let's focus on Jupiter to see it as it comes in. And of course our timing was off. Our timing is always off. Oh, there it is. Okay, good. I was worried for a sec. Okay, well, we've clearly got the wrong inclination. But it's not bad. Uh, let's give it a little bit of a pulse. Okay, that's as good as we're gonna get. And that inclination sucks. But, we can fix that. We can fix that. We don't have a clear node along the way because we're basically hitting it at the node. So we'll just have to fix it over here. Nah, it's a bit close. Okay, and that'll be 118 meters per second once we get to that location. So, very good. We can add that to an alarm clock. And that's the maneuver. Okay, that's the first thing we'll need to pay attention to. And that'll be coming in 
after our first Jupiter mission. We're coming in a little bit fast with this one. And that's because I was trying to hit the node. Maybe not such a good idea if we want to make orbit, but we'll have enough for orbit. It's just a matter of getting into that low orbit that we would really like to to fulfill the contract. Um, the contract uh, has to be fulfilled in like 20 years though, so we've got time to uh, figure things out. It's just a flyby mission that we really need to work on and get fulfilled. Okay, so Jupiter probe on its way. And I think I'll leave it there because I have to build a few things. And yep, yeah, no, well, that's a good view. All right, on that note, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.